copy and paste local profits. Richard, where about whereabouts in Texas are you? So those of you who have never been on a webinar with me, David has never been on a webinar with me. A bunch of you have Lena, you and Jurgen have a couple of a couple of housekeeping things. One, I love animals, and uh, so does my wife. I have two grown children who don't live here anymore, and so I've got a couple of rescue dogs who, when Ray, thank you, buddy, <laughs> Ray says dogs, <laughs> who when they hear Dad talk, uh, they get all excited because they have the run of the place, and. Uh, uh, so, so if they do bark, uh, it's, you know, we're just going to put up with it. Uh, my wife tries to, my, my wife tries to keep them calm, but they can't come in here where I am. Otherwise the little one who's not little, he's like 50 some odd pounds. He, he will feel the need to climb up in my lap and dominate the whole conversation. So, uh, it is what it is. They're rescue dogs. They have their little issues. They had a rough start to life. So. If we do have to put up with them a wee bit, we're just going to do that. Also, if you've never been on a webinar with me before, uh, I don't particularly like slides and all that slick stuff. I like a lot of teaching. I've been doing, you, you're going to see a little bit about me in a second. I like a lot of teaching. I like, uh, I like you walking away with knowing something new that can benefit you in your business and god knows i mean we, we we do need some new stuff in our businesses right about now don't we um but i don't like slick slides i'm not a slick person and uh we have been battered online i i got the you know what kicked out of me uh pretty personally i actually had the damn virus but uh which, which i am I'm over it. I'm well. I mean, my wife and I both got it and didn't end up in the hospital. Thank the Lord. There are a couple of days there where I was wondering, you know, is, is this when you go to the emergency room? But uh, because of the breathing issue. But uh, um, we got it back in, I guess, mid-March. It's kind of hard. If you've had COVID, then it's a little hard for you to... Um, really no it's not like the flu it doesn't hit you like a freight train on one day and you say well i got the flu last wednesday uh with the coronavirus it just kind of sneaks up on you you know and uh so it started sneaking up on me mid march and uh then by then i got sicker and sicker and sicker and sicker and by mid april i was just well, it just took a lot of concentration for me to get out of the bed and go to the bathroom and come back. <laughs> Let me just put it to you that way. I mean, the fatigue was unimaginable, and I still suffer from fatigue from this. But don't get me wrong. I am not complaining. I don't know anybody who's died from this personally, but I know a number of people who know people who've died from this. So I, I am a very, very, very... <laughs> no, Ray, I, they're not going to let me on the beach in Maui. Well... I don't know. They might. I, 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 I'm over it. But you know. Um, anyway, that that's that. Okay. So I'm a little different. I like to make sure you get tons of value. Let's dive into the webinar. I also every now and then like to just sit down and write out all my thoughts for a teaching webinar, and that's what you're looking at here. By the way. This is being recorded. It will be made available to you. I'll hopefully be able to mail out the recording to you because there's going to be a ton in this thing. But hopefully be able to mail out the recording to you um, later on today. I have to run it through Camtasia and do some stuff. But I'll include a link to this document right here that you're looking at and uh, in case you want to reference that. So real quick, this is what we're going to go over in the webinar about me. Now, I already told you some about me. Okay, but about me and then about you. I want to know a little bit more about you. How businesses have been affected by the coronavirus? And I'm not just talking about in broad strokes like, Lee, it's been bad. Well, exactly how has it been bad? And it's not affecting every business the same way. And they're winners and losers. And we're going to talk about all of that. And specifically, the next item, that pause was me sipping iced tea. I'm a good old Southern boy. I have to sip iced tea in the middle of the day. But anyway, <clears throat> that, uh, well, Ray, Ray says we're losers here. 
I don't know if you're talking about you yourself, Ray, or where you live uh, and different parts of the United States got hit differently. Different parts of the world got hit differently. I think uh, in the UK, uh, lockdowns were significantly uh, worse than they were in some parts of the United States. I am in the state of Georgia, which if you don't know where all the states are and why, why would you know that unless you're an American, uh, is in the southwest, excuse me, southeast corner of the United States, just above Florida. And the you know we had we we did we didn't really have mandatory anything we just had suggestions right, uh, but anyway, different different places have been affected different ways, but they've all been deeply 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 affected. I uh, yesterday I went out to a restaurant that's you know all the restaurants here are just takeout only, and me and my son hopped in the car and uh, went to a restaurant and took some food out. And then we drove by a restaurant that's owned by uh, a friend of ours, a business friend of ours. And, um, you know, they had been, I, I also the manager of that restaurant chain, it's not really a chain, that, that business owns like four restaurants. The, the, the manager, vice president, whatever the heck he's called, is also a friend of mine. And, uh, you know, I was just texting him like two, three weeks ago, you know, said, you know, we're scraping by, uh, we're able to keep the doors open, you know, through delivery and stuff like that. Well, we're noticing the place looks really dark and, uh, you know, we, there's a note on the door. We go read the note on the door and one of the employees tested positive for the virus. And so then I got to shut the whole thing down for some, I don't know, several days while they sterilize everything. It's not fun. And it is changing things. But fundamentally, and I may be getting ahead of myself a little bit, I tend to do this after I write all this stuff down, so I'll stay on track. But then I get excited, right? Um, fundamentally, I mean, you think about what business is for fundamentally. Business is fundamentally in order to get products and services that you need to you, to create the product or service and to get it to you, right? So this is why I don't have to go out in my backyard and, you know, hunt for my food or grow my food is because I can pay a business to, or a series of businesses to do all that stuff for you. I, I mean, I go pick up some food to bring home. I mean, think of all the stuff that has to happen to create that food. It's gotta be grown. Uh, it's got to be, uh, uh, it's, it's gotta be harvested. It's gotta be processed. It's gotta be put in trucks. It's gotta be taken somewhere. It's gotta be cooked somewhere. Uh, I have to know that that, and this is a huge thing for us in the business that you and I are in. I have to know that that business is still open. I have to know that they're, you know, uh, doing a takeout and stuff like that. Uh, that's not necessarily evident. And then I have to get in my car and that's a whole nother series of businesses. They have to create the car and the gasoline and the roads and all that stuff. So you can see that's what an economy is. An economy is nothing more than uh, uh, an extremely elaborate way for me as a human being, as a biological creature, to get those things that I need in order to stay alive. And so, since we still have billions of people on this planet and, uh, you know, adjusted for where they live, they, they need certain levels of services, um, that means that businesses are going to figure out some way to get that stuff to the person. Because the idea of all of us just, you know, walking out to the park and shooting our food and bringing it home, that's not going to happen. So the premise of business is that people need stuff. That's the premise of business. If people didn't need stuff, you wouldn't have business, you wouldn't have an economy. There'd be none of that. There'd be no reason for it. Now, people still need stuff. It's just that because of the virus, how, it, how you get it the logistics of getting it to you, what it is, you know, the steps taken and how it's paid for even. Uh, we're, we have a coin shortage in the United States. Who, who would know? Uh, all, all that stuff, that has to be done differently. And you as marketers, that's what you got to understand. And that's the process that you got to enter into. All right. So that's really where I'm coming from on this. So where the winning businesses are, how you can find those businesses, and this is really, really, really key, and prospect them, I should say prospect to them, <laughs> in a way that works amazingly well post-COVID. We'll talk all about that, and my own post-COVID prospecting and sales method, because guys, 
I lost a ton of business and I was uh, literally just sort of like vegetating. I'm not, I'm, I, I, I am the very definition of an action taker. Okay. Even when I'm sick. Right. And I wasn't, look, I, look, I mean, honestly, I wasn't so sick. I was just, you know, couldn't do anything. I mean, I, but, but I was so sick for like two weeks that, like I said, that it took a lot of thinking and a lot of like self-motivating just to get out of the bed, walk down the hall, use the facilities and come back. So yeah, I was that sick, but it wasn't like, you know, I mean, I wasn't sitting in a hospital on a ventilator. Thank God. There's me. In case you don't know what I look like, a lot of you come to me from YouTube, and I love YouTube because it allows me to connect with you on a personal level. You've already seen me, heard my voice. That's really, really cool, but that's me. Real quick about me, a lot of you are old friends. Many of you are new friends. I'm not going to belabor this. I do want you to know a little bit about my history. This is going to take all of four painless seconds. As of earlier this year, so still this month, uh, let's say like two weeks ago, uh, I've been a full-time online entrepreneur for a decade. It was 10 years ago when I used to be a mathematics teacher. It was 10 years ago when I called up my vice principal and said, uh, I just you know can't do this anymore. And, um, you know, thank God they let me out of my contract. Uh, I don't know what I would have done. Moved to Paraguay. I don't know. But anyway... I was a mathematics teacher. I called them up. They let me out of my contract. They were really, really nice people. I enjoyed the job. It's just that, you know, I was ready for something else. And there were a few other things going on. Uh, I have another health issue, frankly, uh, that, that was rearing its ugly head. Uh, uh, not anything um, uh, uh, mortal, but but something that makes teaching difficult. So then, and, and, and that was just confusing the whole thing. And I taught high school. And I taught mathematics. And I taught in a somewhat underperforming school. And although I loved every second of it, it was killing me. I mean, the stress was killing me. So I had been online for three years trying to figure all this stuff out. I quit my job uh, the next day, literally the next day uh, I landed my first client. I was selling a version of uh, Google My Business Optimization. It wasn't called Google My Business back then. I think it was called Google Places or maybe it's called whatever it was called before it was called Google Places. I can't remember it so long ago. And uh, that was really, really cool. And then a year later, a friend of mine suggested that I start, because I used to be a teacher, guys. So this, this, this teaching thing, it's in my blood. I'm good at it. And I really enjoy it. And I get a blast when people hit me up and say, Lee, man, I bought that course. And guess what? I'm making money. Thank you so much for helping me with that. That, that just, that's the best of the best. So a friend of mine suggests I start creating courses that show people how to do what I was doing. And I was familiar with the Warrior Forum. So you're going to date yourselves a little bit if you say you remember what the Warrior Forum was because they were sold and kind of, I mean, it's still there. You can Google it, but it kind of quit being the thing that it was back then. And so I started creating what, what were called WSOs, Warrior Special Offers. These are like many info products and, uh, you know, just start selling those. Also, in addition to doing my uh, uh, local marketing business, which we called offline marketing back in the day. And fast forward to today, fast forward to today, still work with clients on an ongoing basis, basis and I still create information products, how-to products and software geared toward helping people just like you make excellent incomes in new and surprising ways. And I specialize in helping you help local businesses and through through either through all kinds of marketing i especially love social media marketing and um so yeah that's who i am now let me um and look i'm an open book i mean you just you know the, the, this is backward the, 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 this is this is a two-way street so and a lot of y'all are leaving a lot of comments and i love that but for people who are new feel free to leave comments i, I will do my best to answer all questions now, uh, I want to know a little bit about, about my audience. Uh, some of you, I recognize the name. Some of you, dear friends, and, and you know who you are, but uh, I got a ton of new people. I want two numbers. If you could put two numbers separated by a couple of spaces in the chat. Number one, how long have you been working online, either making money or trying to make money? And how many clients do you currently have? Okay, so Brad, thank you, buddy. Christian, thank you so much. <clears throat> okay. 
Let me have a few more. Howard, how are you? It's nice to see you again. And Harry, you too. Okay. So basically, uh, I have uh, Suzette. You, 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 you just rock, but you already know that. Uh, I have a, uh, as I usually have, I, I have a broad spectrum of people, right? I have total newbies. I have people whom I would uh, say you're you're trying to make it work, but it's not quite working yet. And then I would say that I have some people for whom uh, uh, things are working pretty good. And uh, that's that's very very cool. Um, I I will bring all this back, Mark. How are you doing, my friend? I will bring all this back as we talk through this. Okay, so that that information is good to have. The elephant in the room, the coronavirus. I mean, who could have predicted this back in October? <laughs> You know, I mean, it's uh, it's pretty hilarious. You know, uh, yeah, well, what's that old saying? Uh, we make plans and God laughs or something like that. I remember having 2020 all planned out, nice little, uh, you know, yearly plan, just all polished up and shining. <laughs> yeah, well, that didn't quite happen like that, right? So, A, I got sick with, as I said, I got sick with this in early March. I was sick through mid-May. I still suffer from lasting effects of this. Uh, I was actually looking up the definition. <laughs> I was actually looking up the definition of uh, chronic fatigue syndrome and pretty sure that at the moment I qualify for that. They're, they're like, I don't know, five or six different things that if you have, then, you know, you can be diagnosed with that. I mean. You know, so so I, I still struggle. I still suffer with that. Don't don't get me wrong. I'm not complaining. I'm extremely grateful. It could have been much worse. And I'm really grateful that I know I have the skills that I have. Otherwise, I would be up um, a particular creek whose name starts with S that we can't uh, that that we can't just you know name in polite company. You bet, Christian. And when the virus hit, so B another thing. <laughs> Yes, Lena. <laughs> so, uh, well, you know, there's that. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So, so the virus hit, right? And me, just like a lot of you have already told me, and uh, just like a lot of businesses, but especially us uh, marketers, uh, you know, a lot of people got scared. You know, and, and it makes total sense. You know, like uh, I do a lot of uh, AdSense. Um, uh, for my own business, and I unplugged that for about a month because I had no idea what was happening, you know. And I, I, I just, um, uh, my son works with me in my business, and I was talking with Luke, and I said, you know, let, let's just let's just unplug the uh, unplug the advertising for a few weeks and and, and see what's going to happen, you know. Uh, that was not a mistake. I plugged it back in once once I realized that uh, the uh, the things were going to be rough, but they were not going to be just hideous, right? But uh, a lot of businesses did that. I mean, it makes total sense. You know, you can say, well, why would you ax your marketing budget? Um, you know, because, well, take my uh, friend in his restaurant. Uh, I mean, if you got a restaurant, you got to buy food for tomorrow, right? You know? But you don't have to have marketing for tomorrow. Now, for next month and for a half a year from now, you better have marketing. But in order to get through tomorrow, you don't have to have marketing. You just got to get food to bring into the restaurant to process into meals. See, so the marketing budget's easy to ax, and it's not on a day by day basis necessary, although it is necessary to grow the business and or keep it where it is. And 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 then there's just the general confusion. You know, I saw, wow, things are really changing fast. And I, I just wanted to give myself a breather. This is before I got really, really sick. I wanted to give myself a breather and I wanted to see, maybe I need to change the marketing budget. Maybe I need to do different things with it. You know, uh, turns out all I need to do is plug it back in. But in, in my case, but in a lot of businesses case, they need a different focus. And we're going to talk about this on this webinar. And so a lot of people, I got a lot of, um, for a while, right? Now, this would be in February, I think. 
I can't remember. We'd have to go back to YouTube to look. It's not important, but I think it'd be in February. This is before I got sick myself. I was like doing a bunch of uh, free webinars and stuff for people or Zoom Zoom meetings and people on my list. Maybe some of you were on there. I don't know. And, uh, you know, it was just like it was me giving, you know, me paying it forward, right? Uh, which we're going to talk about me paying it forward, me saying, you know, here's the form, you know, we're, we're entering rough waters. Let's figure this out together and that kind of thing. Um, it turns out I couldn't continue that. Uh, I, I, because I got sick and, uh, you know, I had to pull the plug on that, unfortunately, but, you know, through that, through people just messaging me or hitting me up on Facebook or, you know, um, 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 tickets, you know, and stuff like that. Um, man, I, I, I had a lot of people and I, I've just had a lot of people on this webinar, uh, help. I lost all my clients or help, you know, 80% of my business is gone. And, you know, yeah, I mean, just like bam, poof, uh, or I was just getting started and now all the businesses are closed. Look at the wording there, 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 there's a specific reason I wrote that wording like that. All the businesses are closed. Okay. So keep that word all in mind. Because people have already told me that all the businesses are closed on this webinar. Or people can't afford to invest in marketing any longer. You know, and I'm not knocking anybody for saying that because these thoughts were going through my head and I was taking appropriate reaction, uh, appropriate actions in my own business because of this. So you got the drift, right? So many of you think that something massive happened to the market. And you're right. Something massive happened to the market. But here's the deal, and this is what I was getting back when I was giving you your little mini economics lesson about why we have economics and business and all that in the first place is because humans have needs. I mean, for you know, forget the hierarchy of the needs and all that stuff. I mean, yes, me binge watching Netflix is a different kind of need from me having something to eat tonight. Yeah, I got it and all that stuff, but humans have needs. And as long as humans have needs and as long as that human can't fulfill that need themselves all by themselves on their lonesome, as long, I mean, you know, like, like as long as you're, you ever see that movie Castaway with, um, gosh, what was his name? This is one of my favorite movies because I'm such an introvert. The idea of being cast away on an island with no one around me is just so appealing. But uh, Tom Hanks, thank you, Suzanne. But, uh, uh, that guy, notice that guy during the time he was on the island, you know, fishing and all that stuff, right? He did not need economics. He did not need money. Money was going to do nothing for him. You literally could have dropped, I mean, Bill Gates could have flown over, right? And dropped a, a, a pallet of billions of dollars onto the island and flown off, you know, and said, bye-bye, sucker, you know. And uh, that pallet, what would he have done with it? Maybe taken the bills and burned them for fuel? It's going to do nothing, right? Because he doesn't need an economy. But that's the only kind of person in the world who doesn't need an economy, right? The, the fact is, all of us on the world, I don't care if you're living in a very undeveloped country or you're living in a developed, highly developed country, you need some level of economics and you need some level of business to get you your stuff. Otherwise, you're not going to have food, clothing, and shelter, and you're not going to last very long. The need is still there. See, see, that's the really important thing that you guys got to understand. The fundamental need is still there. The how that stuff gets through there, the logistical channels, the habits that people form. Like I'm now in the habit. I had never used it before because working from home for over a decade uh, or a decade full time. But working from home for a decade, I used to like to go out to eat lunch a lot. It got me out of the house. I worked right literally in my house, right? And so uh, I never needed these little things like DoorDash and Uber Eats. But guess what? I had built the new habit. I just had a burrito for lunch. Where did that where did I get that? It was delivered to my door. Uh, and I like burritos and I get excuse me, two or three burritos uh, a week from Chipotle. And uh, I built a new habit of doing that, right? So the point is I got my food. I just didn't go to a restaurant to get it. Okay. So, so now you got to start thinking, oh, well, 
it's not that business disappeared. And I know in some places it looks awfully dismal, but it's not that business disappeared. It's that there are different ways of getting stuff to people. And that's what you as marketers have to understand. So, yeah, I mean, it's real, but, but it's true. I'm not making light of anything. It, it, it's it's uh, things are not dismal, but they are radically different. Small, a lot of small restaurants are having a really hard time. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, restaurant belongs to a friend of mine or, or um, several restaurants, uh, non-essential businesses, non-essential service businesses, hair salons, right? Uh, I've cut my own hair for years now, but uh, I don't have a lot of hair to cut, so it's easy, <laughs> but uh, I've cut my own hair for years. So styling hair is not something that I need personally. So, uh, but that thing, you, you don't, you know, those businesses are having a really, really hard time. Uh, I have another friend who owns a high-end hair salon. I haven't talked with her since the COVID happened, but uh, she did email my wife, who is also, uh, you know, who, who, who goes there and uh, said, you know, and, and I read the email and, it, you know, she's 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 got a lot of high end hair care, facial care, beauty type products uh, that her business owns that, you know, they, they would sell. You know how when you get your hair cut and then you go to check out and they say, would you like any product with that? I mean, that's what they say in the United States. That word product just blows my mind. But anyway, that stuff. Right. I mean, she's still got like a small little, little mini warehouse of that stuff. And so she's trying to sell that stuff. In other words, she's trying to uh, do her best to keep the doors open. So those are two great examples. But, you know, a lot of businesses are either squeaking by or, guess what, thriving. Even in England. Nobody's going to believe me. But even in England, there are businesses that are thriving right now. I um, had noticed this. Not about England. I'm in the United States. I had noticed this. Now, this isn't all going to be theory. We're going to get down to brass tacks in just a couple of minutes, but I'm I'm trying to, look, you, you can know what to do, but if you don't have the right mindset, you're not going to go out there and do it. And one thing that got crushed in so many marketers and so many people on my list is, oh, hell, there's no business for, nobody's going to hire me. Why would they hire me? Everybody's got their doors shut. That's not true. It can't be true. How many people y'all got in the UK? Like uh, 60, 70 million, something like that, I think, uh, if I remember correctly. All those people have to eat. I mean, they got to live somewhere. They got to have heat. They got to eat. Uh, things break. Uh, uh, the toilet needs to get fixed. Uh, clothes need to be cleaned. Uh, business needs to happen. Uh, my God, I mean, people are going to the hospital with uh, COVID-19. So you got all of that stuff happening. There are businesses out there, even in the UK, that are doing either either scooting by or doing well. I look this. You can look this up uh, online if you want to. Um, U.S. Chamber of Commerce had an interesting article about businesses that are thriving during COVID. These are not the only ones, by the way. But I'm just proving to you, Lee is right. There are businesses thriving, thriving. When I googled this, I used the word thriving <laughs> during COVID. And this is straight from the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. But check this out. Now, I'm not suggesting that everybody jump on these businesses because for a lot of them, it doesn't even make sense. But I want you to think of what is it that makes this business work? All businesses, guys, every single business on the planet is somehow necessary. Now, I know that's really saying something. Okay, how is Netflix necessary? I don't know. They're making billions of dollars a year or hundreds of millions of dollars a year because a lot of people find it necessary to have relaxation. You know, I didn't invent the human animal, but uh, we like stuff like that. So in that sense, it's necessary. Look at these cleaning services, delivery services makes total sense. We don't have a lot of these around here, but maybe somebody does somewhere drive in movie theaters, grocery stores. Like I said, folks got to eat. Folks have to eat. I mean, if they don't have, I mean, if they're not eating, there's just going to be blood, bloodshed and riots in the streets within about a week, right? I <laughs> love this next one. I don't drink, but I love this next one. Liquor and wine stores, meal prep delivery companies. Well, sure. So, Lee, are you telling me that I need to go out and do marketing for Uber Eats? No, I'm not saying that. What I am telling you is that 
there are a world of restaurants out there. I mean, let's take this to the next level in your head. There are a world of restaurants out there who need to be able to tell other people, you can get my food through Uber Eats or you can get my food through DoorDash or or wherever y'all live. I don't know if you, you know, but, you know, the, these delivery, you know, these, uh, you know, where people get in their car and deliver stuff to you, right? Okay. So, uh, so let, 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 let's say some little uh, mom and pop restaurant, they're willing to sit there and make pizzas all day long. You don't have to get your pizza from Domino's. You can get your better pizza from mom and pop's uh, pizza restaurant. But you have to know that, they, that, that they're available through Uber Eats. You, you get on Uber Eats on your phone. I mean, if you live in a major metropolitan area, which I do, you get on Uber Eats on your phone. Uh, scrolling through there and just trying to decide what you want to eat, which I don't do, uh, that's very daunting. I mean, there are literally thousands of uh, restaurants on there. So, so that's not the way somebody's going to find you. So marketing, a large part of marketing is getting the consumer to understand that the business exists and has what they want at a price that they're going to like. That's what we do as marketers, right? So right there, I'm uh, re restaurants and uh, helping the consumer in the local area know, hey, just go to Uber Eats. You know, you you can order more from us. They probably even do coupons. I, I don't know that much about Uber Eats. Canned and jar of goods companies. That's for the, I guess that's for the preppers of the world, uh, game makers and sellers. Fitness equipment companies. Well, not all fitness equipment companies, guys, are huge. There's a bunch of, uh, like, specialty bike companies. Uh, uh, there are a bunch of uh, outdoor outfitter type companies. Uh, you know, I, I don't know about the UK, but here in the United States, I mean, no one said that you can't go bicycling, all right? So uh, no one said that several people can't go bicycling. Right. I mean, I, I, I think you could social distance while bicycling. So what about all those businesses? Uh, a friend of my sister-in-law and brother-in-law's owns a. Um, owns a uh, an outfitter, um, you know, they, they do rafting and stuff like that. Well, what about that? You know, I mean, do people really know about that business? Uh, do enough people know about that business? You know, all that stuff. I mean, there is a world of businesses who need help getting the word out. And that whole process of getting the word out and the specific way that we do this as digital marketers, they need this. Landscape and yard maintenance companies. Yes. Guy who does my grass took a week off. My yard looked like hell. I hadn't mowed a yard in God knows how long. I even own a mower. It just sits out on my carport and looks at me. And, uh, you know, he showed up yesterday. I'm just, you know, just, thank God you're here. You know, this is getting knee deep. Uh, and just think about this. If you got a bunch of sick people, now granted, the, the death rate of COVID seems to be pretty minuscule, but you still got a bunch of sick people. I can guarantee you, hand on a stack of Bibles. I did not feel like mowing my yard. Thank God I got a guy who does this, right? So that's a whole nother world of people to mow yards. Bread baking companies, coffee subscriptions, gardening supplies, mask makers, telehealth services. Telehealth services, that's a really interesting, uh, a friend of mine owns a, a large, this is going to be a weird sense, a large medium-sized medical corporation. They got into telehealth services big time right when this hit um, and uh, um, uh, it, doing really, really well for them. But I can guarantee you that a lot of, still, still, a lot of small time practitioners. Now, this is not going to be in the United States. This is not be the the mainstream health. Okay, this is going to be things like uh, uh, certain things with dentistry, certain things with chiropractic, certain things with stuff like that. They still need help, guys. They need to know. Oh God, I mean, think about this. For another friend of mine. Look, I'm an old guy. I know a lot of people, but another friend of mine has owned a karate studio for. 30 years. Okay. Now he is doing lessons through Zoom. That's cool. Does he need you to help go help, you know, you know, say, well, put the mouse here and click that. No, he doesn't need you to do that, but he does need you. People like that do need you. Yoga studios, exercise studios, all those things. They do need you 
to help them tell their clientele and that greater group of people that they're that knows their clientele in other words i mean you think of this like a series of donuts around a person tell those people these people offer these classes online and they're not expensive and you know what if you're tired of sitting in the house why don't you do some damn karate in the bedroom there's a yoga studio that i used to go to before covid okay um they're all over this there's a world of businesses out there that need help guys okay so if you think that things change you're right but if you think and 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 frankly if you think that the economies shrank you're right you're right you're right but if you think that there's no business to be had you're wrong i mean it the list just goes on and on and on audio and ebook sales this is has to do with another thing that i do so I'm intensely studying and have been for uh, about three years, intensely studying this market and part of it. Audio and ebook sales are skyrocketing, as you might imagine. But we're talking about, uh, uh, who was it? Barnes and Noble, Kobo or somebody in just like two months. I mean, still skyrocket growth of 60%. That, 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 that's, like, that's like your market uh, grew by half and then a little bit. This is huge. What has that got to do with anything, Lee? Oh, well, how, how about this? Do you know how many uh, authors, uh, solopreneurs, entrepreneurs who could use a nonfiction book to, to, to boost their business? Speakers, no, they're not going and speaking in front of people. But what they are doing is trying to rearrange that. Do you know how many people there are like that on LinkedIn? Tens of thousands, tens of thousands. There are more people in that just general little niche on uh, that, that I just described on LinkedIn. There are more people on LinkedIn in who, who will willingly pay you. We're talking about some of those people are making mid six to seven figures. No joke. There are more people like that on LinkedIn. There are enough people like that on LinkedIn that everybody on this webinar, plus everybody that signed up for it that didn't make it today, plus everybody that could think about signing up for it, could make a killer living just servicing that one little niche. Are you still thinking that the ship sunk? The ship did not sink, guys. It's not, it's not that it's all okay. Uh, a, a really, really, really good friend of mine who's a, who's been a professional domainer for probably about 15 years. Well, really, ever since they've had domains. It makes a very good living doing that. It's a good friend of mine. He told me one time, Lee, entrepreneurs are people who jump out of really tall buildings and then on the way down, they think, holy crap, I guess I need to invent something like a parachute. Okay. And that's why you go to webinars like this is because you're trying to open your mind, you're trying to learn some new things and you're trying to say, well, wait a minute, I think Lee's right. I think I can have my cake and eat it too. I think I can go out and help businesses. You just need to start picking the right businesses and you, or the ones who are struggling, you need to help them think of how they can quit struggling so much, i.e. my friend who owns the hair salon, who's selling her high-end hair products online so on and on and on podcast podcast I, I i don't do a podcast i don't have time to do a podcast i keep wandering around thinking man you really should do a podcast because i obviously i love to talk about stuff right uh podcast listenership is freaking exploding audio books are up like two or three hundred percent i'm just saying the world is changing, but because all those humans on this planet still need all that stuff, business is still going to be done. Not everybody is sitting on the couch eating potato chips and getting fat while watching Netflix or Amazon Prime Video and total disclosure. <laughs> I did some of that, including the getting fat part, but uh, Thank God the battery on my scale decided to crap out uh, <laughs> like in like in January because I don't really want to know. So bottom line, my friends, is this. There's plenty of business out there. You just have to know how to find it. So in the rest of this webinar, I'm going to show you how to find that business. 
then I'm going to then I'm going to offer to help you through the process of building your own assets that you'll need to get your business up and running again. Okay, now what I just alluded to there is going to be in the form of a paid webinar series. So this is not like a big pitch. Obviously, I'm just sitting here telling you stuff that you need to know. I'm going to tell you a ton more stuff that you need to know for absolute free. But if you need help with this, I'm there for you. Also, hang on to the end of the webinar because I got something cool to to give you um, that's real. It's not just crap. It's it's not just cool crap. It's real. Here, that dog, he's just a mess. So we'll get to the uh, format and the contents in a few. Just uh, let me just make sure you understand. I'm here to help. I really, obviously, I have to get paid. Otherwise, I have to do something else. But I really just want to get you guys back on track with something that's actually going to work. So. You know, when we talk about a paid webinar series, we're not talking about thousands of dollars. I price this at a price that anyone can afford. So let's do this. Like I said, uh, I got sick. Uh, and I was like, okay, somebody just literally moved all of the cheese. <laughs> you know, there's an old book, Who Moved the Cheese, right? Uh, you know, about things changing. And somebody just literally moved the cheese within space of about a week or two. And I was just like sitting there thinking, Okay, something needs to happen. Uh, I need a new prospecting method. I need a new way of reaching out to build my business back up, but it can't be like it was. I, I am an old style salesperson. Uh, I spent or spent, I don't anymore, but I spent a lot of time talking to people like, you know, on Zoom, on the phone and on that stuff. I mean, try doing that when you're in the middle of having COVID. It's just, you know, it just doesn't work. So I need a new prospecting method that would do the following. Leverage COVID to my advantage, and I should put hyphen um, ethically. Didn't require a lot of work, i.e. not much work at all, okay? Could easily be outsourced. Sold me in advance. In other words, I didn't want to have to sit there and sell myself because I didn't have the energy to. Uh, I have the energy to now, barely, honestly. I mentioned that I, I ended up with kind of like a chronic fatigue syndrome thing. But I wanted something that would sell me so that when I talked with prospects, they were highly likely to buy from me and sold products especially that could easily be outsourced because there's no way, I mean, you know, when I was really sick and even when I wasn't really sick, when I was just like kind of like medium-sized sick, if that makes any sense, uh, I didn't have the energy. Of the bandwidth to uh, to sell stuff and deal with it, you know. I I just wanted to sell stuff that I could just flip over to an outsourcer and say, here, do this. Now, going all the way back 2019, for for you new people, uh, I, I again, I got a bunch. I I got some older people on here. Older, i.e., you've known me longer. Uh, Lena, you've been on many webinars with me. You and Jurgen have bought uh, many coachings and group coachings and things from me. You know this. A lot of people know this. Some of you don't know this. Uh, I am the king of making things like really simple. I, I don't like complex at all. And I'm constantly trying to apply the 80-20 rule. I'm constantly trying to... No, I didn't say you were old, Lena. <laughs> Lena say, but I'm not old. No, no, I'm positive that I'm quite a bit older than you all. But anyway, I'm constantly trying to uh, um, just cut out the fat. You know, I mean, I actually have a life, by the way, besides work. <laughs> I haven't mentioned that part, but, uh, you know, I don't work all the time either. And, you know, e e even when I'm totally healthy. But so in the, at the end of 2019, I was experimenting with some stuff. And I really wanted, I was testing a new way of prospecting that didn't require phone calling and didn't even require opt-ins. This is going to be a big part of this, didn't require opt-ins. My goal then was to give away such valuable information that people would seek me out to do work for them and buy services uh, uh, from me for them. So, you know, I kind of experimented with that at the end of 2019. I thought, you know, I'm kind of making some headway with this, but, you know, then, then I was kind of polishing up, you know, my business plan about 2020, which God apparently totally ignored. But uh, when I got sick, so when I got sick in March, I kind of went back to that stuff I was doing. And I said, you know, that was looking pretty promising. Can I just massively simplify this so that even though I feel awful, 
I can just sit here and do this and, and my business will uh, build. And so I boiled everything down to this. Now, now this is like going to be, this is deceptively simple guys, but this is, uh, there's, um, I think he was an architect, Mies van der Rohe. Uh, I think that was an architect. I, I could have this. Another thing that COVID did is it, is it screwed up my brain. <laughs> so I could have this all garbled, but he has this wonderful saying, and it could be the same guy. It's still a wonderful saying. Uh, God is in the details, right? God is in the details. So this, what I'm gonna, these like four little bullet points here, I'm gonna read to you. And you're gonna say, Lee, seriously, you, 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 you kept me on a webinar for 48 minutes and just told me that. Are you joking? God is in the details, guys. Okay, it's not really about the idea so much as about the execution, which we'll get to. I'm gonna give you the whole thing. So number one, I created a messaging system that I could easily copy and paste on LinkedIn because I didn't feel like doing anything other than copying and pasting. I did not feel like being intelligent at all, all right? I created a very valuable report which gave people a ton of very useful information about services I sell. I actually created two reports. Now, if you will stay on the webinar to the end of the webinar, to the absolute end, the last thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna give you a link where you can download one of these reports for free. You don't have to pay me a thing, just for free. I'm I am paying you for your attention, but I'm doing you a service because you really should be here. Now, this next one's a big key. This is something that I can do that not everybody can do. This, this does take an enormous amount of skill. I am a really good copywriter, like blisteringly good. Okay, well, that's not because of uh, I'm a genius. It's because I have written hundreds, literally hundreds of sales letters for me, for clients and uh, stuff like that. And I have literally, this is not this is not an exaggeration. I have written thousands upon thousands of promotional emails. Bill, just hit me up in uh, support. I get it to you. I have written thousands of promotional emails and tons of other promotional copy. I can write a sales letter that you can read and you won't even know it's a sales letter. Okay. All right. I can just do that. It's, it just is. But anyway, the report that I wrote, and this is pig, uh, piggybacking on what I was doing in 2019, is actually, yes, it's a report and there's a ton of valuable information, but actually when you strip that away, it's actually a sales letter selling me and my services, but it's not a clunky sales letter. It is a barely perceptible sales letter. Now there's a bunch of psychological reasoning behind all this. Uh, and uh, I included a very clear and very specific call to action. I, I played around with the call to action a lot uh, in this report because I didn't want to screw around with having to go back and forth with people. Well, what is it that this is? And do you think this would help my business and all that? I just wanted you to read the damn report and make and make an appointment with me on Calendly. Lena, t Lena, tell you're going to just hit me up when it feels better. We'll definitely do that. You know, I mean, that's literally what I wanted because I was sick. Okay, I, I, I did not want to be there when it all happened. I wanted you to read the report and 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 I wanted the the copywriting, okay, to do its job. And then you sit there and say, okay, cool. Uh, I need to get with this guy. And where do I go? I go to his calendar link, uh, book a 15 minute appointment. I wanted all that to happen without me having a thing to do with that process, right? Because I was just lying in bed. <laughs> I, I had these like three weeks that I, I called them my three nap a day. <laughs> I was on like three naps a day. It was utterly ridiculous. So my report is, uh, and the message that I use, uh, that's a God awful sentence and it looks like something got cut out. But anyway, um, so wrote the report. I started out one report and then I flipped over to another report because I kind of liked the stuff I was selling in the other report better. But I wrote all this, I polished it up, I, you know, um, uh, made it do what it's supposed to, and then started, you know, actually uh, running this, you know, just by, by just giving this out on LinkedIn for free. And um, with a message, and the message, uh, you can write your own message, but this right here is an example of a message. Uh, this is not word for word what I was doing, but it's it's got all the it's all the hot buttons. 
So you might want to either write this down or when you see the replay to this, I'll have a link to this uh, particular Word document. Maybe I'll turn it into a PDF and then you can download it and look at it. But uh, anyway, my message on LinkedIn, and I only sent people one message. It was just bam, right? Which is a really dangerous thing to do on LinkedIn. Not dangerous, not like somebody gonna come over and blow your head off or even cancel your account. It's just that most people on LinkedIn ignore the one message spam thing. Right. So you got to write this message in a certain way to sort of get through all those little filters. But anyway, uh, I would just say, you know, like, um, hi, so and so reaching out to you with a free no opt in report about XXXXX. That would be what I was selling. Please download this completely safe. If I can help you with any of this, uh, please let me know. Just trying to pay it forward during the lockdowns. Now, you see how that hits all the buttons? Sean, absolutely, buddy. Um, at the end of, I tell you what, Sean, if you'll hold on to the end of the, cause I'm going to roll here, obviously, <laughs> if, if you will hold on to the end of the webinar, I'll give you a link, not only to the report, the first report that I use. No, it's totally cool, but I'll give you a link to the first report that I use, but I'll also give you a link to this document too. But for those of you looking at the replay, Wherever you're looking at the replay, there's going to be a link going somewhere and you can get your hands on this thing. Because this is so, I mean, th this is so simple that a person can read it and think, say what, right? Okay. Arthur, we're going to get to the types of businesses in just a minute. Uh, great question. This is a deceptively powerful psychological little message. Check this out. Jimmy, paying it forward. Okay, Jimmy, you know the idea of paying it back. Like, uh, let's say I built a business, made $100 million, and then I spend the rest of my life uh, supporting various charities that I believe in. That would be paying it back, right? Which is kind of odd because it's not like I took it from anywhere. I built it, but uh, we won't discuss the semantics of that. Well, paying it forward just means, Jimmy, basically giving before you get or giving with no intention of getting or gi just, just giving to a broad group knowing that somehow from some of those people or maybe some other people, you're going to get what you need as a result of all that giving. So this is giving first. So Jimmy, let, let's say giving first, all right? The spirit of giving first, uh, well, in, in your lives personally, and I'm not preaching to you, but in your lives personally, it's a very important thing, right? But in business, if you do it right and if you're ethical about it, ethical would mean the thing that you're giving is going to be of real value. If you're giving first, it can be a hugely powerful thing, hugely powerful. Uh, do I have anybody on the webinar who in February, and I think it was January, February, right around then, uh, we were doing some weekly uh, Zoom meetings. Any of you guys on this webinar? Uh, Lena, you might have been on one. I, I can't remember. Lori? Well, look, I mean, that was great stuff, right, Lori? I mean, we, we, we you know, free. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm giving you great stuff. Uh, and, and, uh, but, but Lori, you were not required to do something for that. Right. But I knew in my heart that it's always a two way street, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a cyclical thing, right? In other words, if I give, 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 there's going to be plenty of getting for Lee. Right. Well, see the giving and Lori, I don't know. Did, I mean, did you know me that well before then, or I mean, did or, or did you just kind of get to know me? Uh, Lori says I always buy from your link when I can. Thank you so much. See, see, um, I think it was Jimmy who asked me what it what it meant. Jimmy, that's a great that's a great example. So, and 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 it's an ethical example. But uh, when you give a ton, not only are you giving information, not only are you positioning yourself as an expert but but let me tell you something you're, you're you're hitting one of the single most important things that needs to be hit lori's been following me for years thank you lori that means so much to me you're hitting one of the most important things that needs to be hit and that is the concept of trust think about it guys the world is going to shut Oh, no. Now that when I put this on YouTube, I'm going to have to click that little box that says I said a bad word. <laughs> but anyway, the world is going to, you know what, right? Everybody's scared. Businesses are scared. 
you know, and, 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 and here you up, you hit somebody up out of the blue, whether it's on LinkedIn, whether you're, you know, emailing them or whatever, you, you hit somebody up out of the blue. People are frightened. And when people are frightened, they tend to shut down. They tend to put up the psychological armor. As a salesperson, you do not want the other person to put up the psychological armor. Your, your real goal as a salesperson is to prevent the erecting of the psychological armor. That, that's your real goal. So people are so much more likely to do them. I mean, they're like a porcupine with all their little quills out, right? And um, they're really, really, really aware of the trust issue. Thank you, Gregory. I really, really appreciate that. I'm going to read what Gregory said in a second. But they're really aware of that trust issue. Well, Jimmy and everybody else, the paying it forward thing, the giving a lot of information for absolute free, and the, the way that gently inside your report, it is written, by the way, if you need some help with this, you know, here's my Calendly link. Just just book a 15-minute free phone call with me. I'll be I'll be happy to talk you through it. That gentle, that little gentle close right there. See, that builds massive trust because then the other person who's already scared and already confused and already sweating bullets and already putting out fires and already imagining 10 times as many fires that, they, they, that could happen, right? You know, here you are, man, I'm just trying to help. Here, take that. Okay, if I can help you, let me know. Go, we'll get on the phone for 15 minutes. I'll, I'll be happy to do that. I mean, it's, you know, it's no big deal. You know, we're, we're, we're all in this together kind of thing. That kind of thing. If you can project to that, it's easy to project, but it's also really easy to look opportunistic. And that's what you really want to avoid. And that's what you really, in the report and in that message or your version of the message that I'm pointing to right here, I have no idea what that is, your version of the message right there, um, you don't want to look opportunistic. You want to avoid that like the plague. If you think you're looking opportunistic, you need to gentle down some, if that makes any sense. All right, so I'm reaching out to you here with a free, you know, I love capitalizing the word free, but I think in this case, I wouldn't capitalize it. Uh, no opt-in report about social media marketing. Please download this. Completely safe. You know, it doesn't have some Trojan or something in it. If I can help you with any of this, please let me know, very gentle. That's not even a close. That's a gentle suggestion. Just trying to pay it for it. Just trying to be, you know, just, just trying to help out here, you know. Um, and then in the report, see, so you're not even saying, hey, give me a call for 15 minutes. You're not even saying that. You have one sale. This is so important what I'm saying here. In this message that goes out, I use LinkedIn, okay? And, uh, you know, when we get into talking about um, the paid you know, coaching for this. I'll show you all about how I use LinkedIn. I use LinkedIn for this. It works. It works like gangbusters. But that message, you want you want one sale, not two. It's say if I put um, uh, or or hit me up for a fifteen minute phone con consultation. If I put that sentence in there, then that's too pushy. That's oh, he wants to sell me something. Oh, he's just in it for himself. Man, I'm sitting there about to lose my business, my house, my wife, my kids, my everything. I mean, you know, you know, fear takes on a life of its own. I'm, I understand fear deep, deeply. It takes on a life of its own inside your head and your heart, right? That's why you can't push at all in this message. You have one sale. Get them to download the report. Now, now we're going to look at some uh, statistics about what happened when I started to do this. They're going to blow your mind. Gregory said, Lee, I was on uh, some of your webinars. They're really good. I really appreciate that, buddy. So I later bought a bunch of your products and special offers. They're always very helpful and have great information. And low-key, no-pressure system. Amen to that. Okay. Thank you so much. So write your own message, but you got to hit these emotional triggers. Paying it forward. I'm just giving it to you. I'm not expecting anything. You have to believe that in your heart. Okay. Got to give massive value for free. Probably don't want to be like Lee and capitalize the word free. I just can't help it. I, I, I think I was a used car salesman in a previous life. It's safe to download because we're all so worried about, you know, spam and, you know, stuff like that. And if they need help, please reach out. You know, I, that part, 
that part again I, I think for I would put that in the report itself a couple of things as I just alluded to a little earlier during all of this I actually used two reports because I, I just changed up I mean it worked like gangbusters but I really wanted to sell something some other stuff so I created another report actually I didn't do it I, I had some people write it for me and then I provided them with the information they wrote it and gave it back to me and I polished it up but um, I'm going to give you the earlier version of the first report for free at the end of this um, I used click tracking software, so that should be click hyphen tracking software to figure out how many people downloaded the report uh, from this message. All right. Now, I was thinking just based on, you know, life, the fact that I've been doing this for so long, I've, I've been making money online for 13, almost 14 years. And as I said at the beginning, full time for over a decade, uh, I thought maybe three or five percent of people would download it. Eighty percent. This is talking about a cold message. Please download this. Okay, so, so you could take this and make that a hyperlink or just link to the report or something like that. You're going to have to have a link here, right, to get to the report, right? But 80% uh, of, of the people that I messaged this, okay, downloaded the freaking report. How would you like to have this i mean we could just stop right there so somebody tell me if this is cool or not cool we could just stop right there because if i told you right off the bat hey i'm going to show you a system where you can get 80 percent of the people that you reach out to to actually download something that's going to make you look really cool because you are really cool and they're probably going to read it and it's going to have all your stuff in it like your phone number and your calendar link and all that stuff and i'm going to get 80 percent of those people are going to do it I could just stop right there. That right there would be worth us spending time on a webinar for you to learn. But it got even better. 13% of those people scheduled calls with me. So 13% of the 80%, what's, what's that gonna be like? I don't know, seven or 8% of the total number of people, something like that. That's pretty freaking cool, you know? Author, we're gonna get to that in a sec and uh, I sold half of those people. A sick guy sitting in bed. And the selling was so easy because of the way the report was written. It was really pick up the phone, you know, uh, 15, I, I do, I, I like to do two calls. I like to do 15 minutes because really the other half of those people just, they, I, I just didn't need to be wasting my time with them. I'm never rude. I let everybody down easily. Well, you know, I don't really think this is for you, that kind of thing. But uh, um, um, I mean, it's really of the people who, for whom this this was going to really work and, you know, really needed it and all that stuff. Uh, ver I mean, so, so it'd be more, it would be more than 50% of those people of, of the right ones bought it. So this worked so well, literally, because I mean, honestly, the, I, I was in the middle of, the COVID thing that I had to shut it down for about a month because I, I just got so many appointments. Okay. Arthur, I was selling a lot of, uh, I, I sell and focus on a lot of very basic internet marketing stuff for businesses. I don't do stuff that's, and we'll get into the details, but I don't do stuff that's like hip. I don't do stuff that's loop like, like a loophole or a hack or something like that. I don't do a lot of, I do nothing that I have to explain. No, Howard, I was even using a free account with this. I, I was using a free account. Now, late when, when I started this, uh, later it got so good that I, I, I did bump up to a, a business account because that just gives me a couple of little things after that. But I did not use Sales Navigator. And Howard, if you're familiar with Sales Navigator, uh, you, you, you could get the targeting of the businesses a lot better. Uh, so this worked so well, I had to shut it down for a month. And, you know, again, I was sick, you know. I overloaded myself. But then, you know, I turned it back on and it worked. So. Let's summarize for a moment, make sure you understand what I've just told you, because I've just told you a lot of stuff. There's a lot of anecdotal stuff going on. Here's what you need yourself to do to make this work. You need to pick the right businesses to approach. 
I mean, we've talked about the kinds of businesses. So you need to pick the winners and not the losers. Okay, so if you pick restaurants, you're pretty well picking losers. But if you're approaching the restaurant uh, with the idea of, I'm going to get more people knowing about how you can deliver their pizza, then you're really speaking to something that they need to be doing if they plan on staying in business. Okay. So it's not, so, so, so you got to kind of think through it. Um, um, I have no idea what the, um, you know, like renovation and contracting businesses are doing right now. I don't know if people are spending a lot of money adding on uh, rooms to their houses. Uh, my guess would be maybe not so much, maybe not as much. I mean, we did, come from like the, I mean, at least in the United States, we have the single greatest economy in the history of the country back at the end of the year. So, so we did come from that. Thank God. I mean, we didn't just enter into this from, you know, yet another recession, but, um, so, I, but, but I don't know what that business is doing, but you now think about it like this. Think about fixing things. I mean, I live in the Southern part of the United States. It is bloody hot outside. All right. Um, 90 degrees. This is going to be over 30 in celsius i think 30 was 88 or something like that i forgot but anyway like in the 30s for you guys uh uh not in the united states in the 30s right i mean just hot right hot 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 what if your air conditioning breaks well that's going to get fixed definitely okay well this let, let's say this stretches on i mean they say they're going to have vaccines and i hope they do um uh but 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 let's say that they come about in uh howard that's a great question we'll talk about that now let's say the vaccines come in next spring instead of this winter now we got the opposite problem heat at least in the northern hemisphere okay i mean i got many friends from oz on here on here so you just gotta you know you just gotta move me around by about six months right so what about that okay Mark, great question. Hold on to that. So you got to think about what are essential services? Heat, okay. Uh, people that live in, you know, temperate climates in, in the wintertime, you need heat. In the summertime, you need air conditioning. You know, I mean, you need climate control. That's pretty essential. You know, the toilet gets stopped up. I, I would say that's real essential. Uh, putting an addition to the house on, not essential. So it's not like, guys, there's there's um, go for this business instead of that business. Although when we looked at that Chamber of Commerce thing, cleaning services are killing it. No joke. The first time in my life I have ever turned on the radio and heard advertisements for cleaning services was like three months ago. There's a reason for that. Okay, by the way, guys, this, this gives you another way of thinking about things. Go turn on your car radio, or we're talking about the real radio, okay? Because it's not, you know, it's not Spotify. I mean, it's not just, you know, it's it's a different thing. But but go figure out who's advertising in your local area. People spending money for advertising are not idiots, all right? They're spending money for advertising because people need that stuff and see what they're advertising for. It's a great example. Cleaning services. I mean, a friend of mine uh, who lives in Florida told me about, man, cleaning services are killing it right now. And I thought, man, that's crazy. And then I get in the car like the next day and bam, I, get, I, I hear uh, an ad for cleaning services. Um, so be, get hip to that. There are tons of winners out there. And there are a lot of businesses out there trying to survive. People spent decades building a business, they do not want it to vaporize in the in the space of nine months. But they might have to do some serious workarounds. And like delivering all the food. So with a restaurant, who cares who cares where it is? You care about where they can deliver. You care about that they're on Uber Eats. You care about that they're on DoorDash. I had never before this now check check me out i'm a pretty technological i'm obviously a very technological guy right i had never ordered anything from uber eats or any of those delivery services because i thought why would i pay for food to be delivered because i like to actually go out and set somewhere different 
Never, never had I done that, right? But you're stuck at home. And I'm thinking, well, what about this Uber Eats thing? Download the app, man. That's pretty easy to use. So uh, I like burritos. What about Chipotle? Oh, ooh, they're here. Cool. How? How's? Oh my God, they can be here in 30 minutes. Problem solved. But you need to help people think through that stuff. Okay. So, so it's not necessarily what businesses. It's how it. It's helping. It's thinking through how the business is going to get their service to the consumer in a through a different channel usually through a different channel that's what you want to be thinking about let's say we had a bunch of people say stuff howard i would not use a cheat sheet instead of an in-depth ebook you want in-depth you want a lot of words not meaningless words but you want people to i mean look it doesn't have to the stuff i sent out to people is like 10 pages long but you want enough to where it's got some meat on the bone and also a cheat sheet presupposes that you know what to do in order to check out the little, you know, check off the little, you know, check mark things on the cheat sheet. Step one, I did that. Step two, I did that. Well, what if you don't know how to do that? But Howard, I would tell you, if you got some cheat sheets, like some PLR stuff and stuff like that, take the cheat sheet. And then why don't you sit down and write out all those steps or hire somebody to write out all those steps. You find, hey guys, you can find people on Fiverr to do this stuff for you all day long. Hire somebody to write out all that stuff for you. And now you've got a report and you can include the cheat sheet. That's even better. Dentists and realtors. Uh, dentists, that really goes to, uh, uh, I think, what's essential and what's not essential. Well, when we first had the lockdown here in Atlanta, I saw a guy in the grocery store with uh, this giant bandage wrapped around his jaw and his jaw was red and he was talking like this. I felt really sorry for him because I think, man, God knows, what does this guy like have a toothache or something? I had one root canal in my life. It was hell. Um, and I'm thinking, what an awful time. And what do you do? I mean, can you go to the dentist now? That's a question. Can you go to the dentist? I don't know. I don't look the back part of most of my teeth are solid gold. <laughs> Or some, or some version thereof. <laughs> I mean, I have Fort Knox in my mouth. But, you know, I'm a little older than you guys, a lot of you, and a lot of you not. But, but my point is, it's not just uh, it's not just cleaners, yes, dentists, no. It's, huh, what are people doing when they break a tooth? I broke a tooth on a peanut butter sandwich like 20 years ago. It's ridiculous. But what are people doing about that? Surely dentists are doing that. But how do you assuage their fears? Now think about this. This has a lot to do with marketing, guys. How do you assuage their fears? How do you take someone who is doesn't want to get the virus, and God knows you don't want to get this, but I'd take someone who doesn't want to get the virus, and they broke their damn tooth, and they're thinking, oh, my God, what am I going to do? And maybe they moved into a new city or maybe they've been living here five years and they hadn't had any real dental work. I mean, people move around so much now. They hadn't had any real dental work. They don't have an established dentist. That is a perfect area for marketing right there because it's explaining a service. Get your local dentist. You want me to drop a golden freaking golden brick? Okay, this is what I would do for those of you who, who want to get some real business. Hit up dentists. Talk to them about getting their email list, and they they usually have email lists, but but they're in a shambles. Talk to them about hitting up their email list, and then let's do some explaining about how dentistry is working in this office right now. Okay, no, you might want to put off the teeth cleaning for six more months, but stuff happens. How are we handling that? How are we sterilizing things? All of this stuff, all that information, that is the essence of marketing right there you did that you did that uh, i mean not I, I look i'm just free forming here y'all got me so excited I, i'm just thinking of a great business idea right now you do that you you help a dentist take their email list and then act you know you you help the dentist unpack okay so how do you do this what what happens when people walk in the chairs they sit on how do they know they're sterile how often do you clean those uh how often do you you know blah 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 well, you look, well, look here, buddy. Maybe we need to like create a little booklet for you telling everybody how you do all this stuff so that all those people out there who have like semi, you know, semi-emergency work on their teeth might say, oh, well, I, 
I'm not scared anymore. I can go to this guy because they're doing things right. See, this is market. This is the essence of marketing right here, guys. Right. You know, I mean, that, that right there is, is a business. Pick the right businesses to approach the winners. You can do that. You can do that, Michael. I mean, you can do Instagram, Pinterest. You can take pictures. You can, uh, uh, YouTube would be fabulous, you know. Go over there and just do a little YouTube video walkthrough. Of, this is what an appointment with this dentist is like. It'd be fabulous. Put it up on their website. Charge them $2,000 for that video. That's how much I would charge. You could do it on your phone. You know, you put it together with Camtasia. Write a very, okay, this is what you're going to do. Pick the right businesses. And we talked, we just talked about that. Write a very in-depth report about what you want to sell them. Now, this is key. This is key. This is part of the paying it forward stuff. Basically, you want them to be able to take the report and do whatever the service is themselves. You want the report that detailed. You want to tell them what to do. Now, I just told you that I own a loan more. Matter of fact, if I adjusted my head a little bit, I think I might could even look through the door. It's got some glass in it. I can, might could even see the lawnmower. I haven't used this lawnmower in over 10 years. All right. I pay a guy to do my lawn, but I own a lawnmower. I, I you know, just because you, do I know how to mow lawn? Seriously. You know, just because you tell somebody how to do something does not mean that they're going to do it. As a matter of fact, it really means that you're positioning yourself as an expert and giving them a deep level of trust. So they're going to hire you to do it because they've got to spend their time trying to get their business to survive this disaster. Carrie, hold that thought because uh, I am going to talk to you about some coaching at the end of this. And uh, I think that might actually naturally work into that. So just hold that thought. Uh, use LinkedIn to find your target audience. I mean, you use whatever you want. I, I, I don't care. I love LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn is for business. Facebook is for, um, I don't know, what, bitching about politics. <laughs> I don't know what Facebook is for anymore, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, author, I, I, well, author, hold, hold that question until a little later. I, I tried to just answer that. Um, LinkedIn is for business. LinkedIn's the way you get hold of business people. You do not, and you don't need a paid account to get go, to get rolling with this. Use LinkedIn to find your target audience. You're probably going to want to make sure your profile is up to snuff before before you start. So if you've got like a two sentence profile and you're one of those people who doesn't even have a picture, so yeah, <clears throat> and you've got like uh, 80 connections, so yeah, that looks stupid. So fix that, and then start reaching out to the right businesses. Create a message that has a pay it forward feel. I got the message up here. I'm not gonna scroll back to it. Uh, just, just a suggestion. Uh, again, we're, I'm gonna give you a link to this, this particular document that we're looking at. You can download it at the end of the webinar. You can just you know copy and paste that if you want to. I would suggest you really put it into your own words. Make sure the message the message has to refer to the COVID thing, but you don't want to look self-serving. You really do not want to. You you, you want to bend over backwards uh, in order to look gentle and not opportunistic. Okay, if you're if you're at all looking opportunistic, you're screwing up. Now, send out 50 of these messages with links to your report per day. Now, guys, those of you who don't use LinkedIn very much, don't send 50 the first day. Send five the first day, five the second day, five the third day, you know, kind of for a few days and then bump it up to 10 and then bump it up to 15 and over time do that. Okay. So, you know, don't don't just shock LinkedIn. Otherwise they'll have a they'll 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 send you a you know nasty little message and they 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 don't really put you in LinkedIn jail. They just say stop those. Um uh, but look, five a day, five days a week is 25. I mean, uh, 100 of these is uh, that that's like 100 and what, 130 or so uh, a month. I mean, 120, something like that a month. But anyway, that's a ton. You're going to get some business out of this. Plenty of business, especially you're going to get in touch with the businesses who know they need your help. Now, how do, how do I handle the calls? Because remember, I was sick and I'm still. Not 100% at all. And again, I'm deeply grateful for where I am. 
But how do I handle the calls? I, I do this on two call thing. Okay. Call number one, and this is the one I use the Calendly link for, you know, and, and I just put the Calend, Calendly, C-A-N, I, I can't spell, Calendly. It's like calendar, but it ends in Lee, Calendly, L-Y. I send them there, they book their own call, all right? And then I know that, you know, like tomorrow I've got calls at, you know, uh, uh, 2, 2.30, 345, stuff like that, you know. You send them there, they book their own call. You don't have to screw around with them, talk to them. Well, what about four for you? No, five is better for me and all that crap. That's a huge waste of time. All right, just send them a link. Don't even talk to them. Just put it all in the report. Send them a link. Go to Calendly, book the call. Calendly costs you all of 10 bucks a month. Okay, so anybody can afford that. Now, um, great question, author. That That's another one to save toward the end because I don't. Uh, it's a great question, but I, it's... Let's just leave it at great question. I'll, I'll explain to you why I didn't want to answer it right now when I answer it at the end. Now, that 15 minute call, all you're doing is just, hey, how are you doing? Did you enjoy the report? Yeah, great. Well, what kind of business you're in? Blah, blah, blah. So you're thinking about, you know, what can I help you with? Because the report pretty much told you what to do, right? Well, yeah, but uh, uh, honestly, I, I mean, this, this exactly, you know, we've been talking about this and that and all that stuff, uh, but you, you help. Businesses like mine with this, you know, people will essentially close themselves. Just don't talk too much and listen to them. And they will tell you what they need and let them tell you what they need. No hard closing. No hard closing. Just listen to what the market's telling you. Now, call number two is the actual sales pitch. It's really not much of a sales pitch. I'll show you how I handle this in just a second. It's basically order taking. So I do this in a two call thing. Call number one is so I don't spend time preparing to talk to someone who's never going to buy because that's an enormous waste of time. Remember, this whole thing started at the end of last year because I was trying to create an even better for system for prospecting, but then it ended up just saving my butt this year because uh, I could prospect without, you know, w w without taxing myself. Now, on that first call, this is this is how I sell. Uh, I, re I recommend a sort of an audit to them. And you could call it audit, you could call it overview, you could call it something like this. So somebody says, you know, well, blah, 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 I need help with that. Well, cool, I'll tell you what, why don't you, uh, why don't we do this? Um, let me take a look at your website. Let me take a look at your social media presence. Let me take a look at that. You know, you write down all their, you know, social media, what, whatever you're selling, you want to gather the information. And let's do this. Why don't I do, why don't I look at it, take a quick audit, and then I'm going to get back with you. When, when, now you're setting up the second appointment, okay? When's a good time for us to have a little more in-depth talk? Uh, tomorrow, if I, yeah, tomorrow, if I will work for me, uh, you need to, you know, probably be 30 minutes to an hour, something like that. Now, what we're going to talk about, I will have looked at everything that you're doing online, and we will talk about X, Y, and Z. Uh, I'm also going to go ahead and send you a proposal before before we actually meet. Um, uh, the proposal has numbers on it, like I'm going to tell you how much I would charge to do this. So you're going to have all of your information. Notice, guys, I'm continuing to pay it forward. It's going to have all the information that you need to make a decision whether you want to hire me to do this yourself or, or, or whether you want to you know do, do something else or not do it or whatever, right? But you're going to have all of that information. It's all going to be on a little proposal. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to talking to you at five o'clock tomorrow. Cool. Well, great. I'm glad you called. Glad to talk to you. Blah, 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 blah. In the interim, so whatever you're selling, you look at, you know, what they're doing. Like if you're selling them a new website, you look at their old website. Uh, you're selling them email marketing. Well, then you go look around their website and they probably have zero ways for people to even submit something to get on their list. So, so now you got to do that. You know, you just, you know, just make a little note of that. The audit does not have to be a grandiose thing. So have a little write-up of what you found, a little proposal. Uh, the most important thing to help you with this is blah blah blah. Uh, we can have that done in two weeks. Uh, you know, chart. You know, this is what we charged for that. Looking forward to talking with you tomorrow at five. That's the kind of thing that you want to send them before the second call, because. Number one, if they're broke, they can't pay you and you don't want to waste your time with them. God bless them. Number two, you want them to do all their thinking without wasting your time. 
Number three, you want to get on that call tomorrow at five and you want them to already be pretty much self-sold. Now look at all the information they're going to have from you on that call at five. They're going to have your initial report. They're going to have a, a you know, sometimes I call it an audit. They're going to have a little audit. They're going to have a, a proposal. They're going to have how much it's going to cost. They basically, I mean, you've given them the whole damn thing. And all they're doing is getting on that call with you the next day in order to just sort of like solidify the deal. And maybe they have a couple of questions. When do I pay? How do I pay? How does this get done? Do you need my password and all that stuff? Got it? That is really slick selling, guys, because notice the assets are doing all the work for you. You think about the amount of time I have to talk to these people. Uh, it's not even 15 minutes. It's five or 10 minutes, and I can tell whether they're a candidate. Okay? Five minutes, well, look, two minutes, and I can tell they're not a candidate, and I just politely excuse myself. Um, if they are a candidate, then, you know, five or 10 minutes, and then we have the next thing, the next, you know, that next phone call. I always tell people, block out 30 minutes to an hour. It's going to take 20 minutes. Okay? Do that. You know, so I've invested, like, hardly any time talking to a new client. And they know exactly what's going to happen. And they made the decision themselves. And they sold themselves without me having to be there. This is killer stuff, guys. This is killer stuff. You do the simple system for a month, you're going to have more business you can deal with, just like me. It's going to, If you will do it consistently, it will overwhelm you. So now, we are at the point. I got Q&A a little later. I'm going to show you some stuff. But we're at the point where you can go out and do this yourself. I mean, literally, I'm going to give you the link to this document at the very end. So hang on till there. You can get the link. Go take it. Look at it. Do it yourself. That's totally cool. I've delivered on the promise of this free webinar. I have delivered that. I've given you a killer system that's proven. Now, if you would like my help, I am here for you. Either way is fine with me. You'd be nuts if you don't take me up on this because I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you what this is. On August the 5th, I'm starting a three webinar series called Copy and Paste Profits. On that webinar series, I'm not only going to teach you how to do this system in complete detail. So some of you are sitting there thinking, well, exactly what do I say? on that second call. Well, like, well, wait a minute, Lee, you have your report. Well, what about my report? You know, you're a really good copyright. I am a really good copyright. What about, I'm not, how do I do that? You know, all that stuff, we're going to fix all that on this three webinar thing. Not only going to teach you the system in complete depth, I'm going to actually, now here's the key, work with you to build the system for your own business. You do not have to sell exactly what the kinds of things I sell. I'm going to show you exactly what I sell. And those of you who know me, this is not going to be news because I sell the stuff that people want to buy, all right? We'll start at the beginning and creating everything you need to make this work for you and your business. Again, I don't care what you sell. We're going to start by fixing up your LinkedIn profile. Then we'll move on to targeting the right businesses and Arthur and everybody else who's asking that question. Again, it's not that there's a specific, there are some specific businesses. Cleaning service is great. Uh, speakers, authors, uh, uh, authors of nonfiction books, speakers, uh, solopreneurs, those kind, types of people. There are tens of thousands, there may be hundreds of thousands of those people. They are all over LinkedIn. Okay. They need your help. Some of those people, like a not insignificant number of those people, are making mid six figures a year running a business off of a laptop. I just spoke with a lady back in April. And she was one of the people that I got from the system. And uh, uh, she, her business, because she had to physically go speak, uh, her business was really, really hurting. And I was talking to her. I said, okay, so, you know, you're going to have to do it in a different way. But, but the marketing part is you're going to have to let your clients know you're doing it in a different way. That's the marketing aspect. And so we, we worked with that. I'll show you how to find those businesses, reach out to them on LinkedIn using a free account. Now, honestly, this is going to work so well, you probably want to upgrade to a business account. You don't even have to have Sales Navigator, but a business account, which I think is about 60 bucks a month uh, because this is going to work so well. But you can st easily start with a free account. I'm going to show you how to create that very specific message I've been talking about for you and your business. Now, the message and the report go together. They're, they're obviously psychologically and informationally tied together. 
All right, so I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. You're gonna have homework. Now, it's not like I'm gonna get on a jet and come over to where you live and beat on your door and tell you you didn't do your homework. Obviously, I can't do that, but you are gonna have homework. You're gonna write out your messaging for me and send that to me and I'm gonna critique it for you. Uh, I'm gonna give you the other report that I use, the one that I'm using right now. You're getting the first one that I used today, um, which was about selling LinkedIn services. The other report selling a broader, I'm selling a broader category of things. I'm gonna give you the other report that I sell, but most importantly, we're gonna create this system designed for you. Um, I'm gonna show you how you can easily ethically cheat off of my report in order to create your report. In other words, I will show you where the sales part is, all right? You're gonna send your report to me, and uh, hold on, Lori, great question. You're gonna send your report to me. I'm gonna help you insert the specific language that needs to be there. This, this is huge, this is huge. This is probably where you actually do need me, unless you're as good at copywriting as I am, and damn few people are, although there are some, and some of them may be on this call. I'm not trying to have the big head here. It, it, it may sound like it, but I'm not. But uh, I'm gonna help you basically turn that report of you into a little sales letter, although a gentle sales letter, but a little sales letter. We're gonna talk about your 15 minute call, how it should go, exactly what you're going to say. How do you tell within two minutes that somebody's a dud, all right? How do you do that? That kind of thing, time-saving stuff. We're gonna craft your final sales pitch. We're gonna talk about how to do a very quick audit. I mean, this literally takes all of five minutes, but it's very, very valuable for your business. Not for mine, but for your business. And how to use that to close the customer. No real selling required on your part. I'm sure I left out a few other things, but let, let me show you. Let's take a look at this. Pop this in the chat. And I'm gonna charge you $40 million for this. And when I get one person to pay me, I'm gonna retire. That's a joke. I'm, 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 I'm literally here trying to help you. Although I make plenty of money helping you, right? Phil, great question. Let's leave that toward the end. Now, I'm not gonna read you this whole sales letter, all right? And by the way, when we actually do have a replay, it's gonna be up here at the top somewhere. I'll jiggle this stuff around. Here's the deal. This is the same thing I told you on the webinar um, and, and, and essentially the same thing, prospecting system, the numbers. I'm basically just repeating what you heard at the last part of the webinar. And uh, here, here we are, copy and paste local profits. This is gonna tell you exactly what you get in my complete copy and paste prospecting system that lands more clients than I can manage in record time, what businesses you should be approaching, which ones to avoid. Both of the reports that I'm uh, sending out to land clients with exactly how to message businesses, talk about all this stuff, how to leverage coronavirus and make it a plus and not a minus. Guys, at the beginning of this call, I'm pretty sure we were all on agreement that it's a minus, it can be a plus. During this course, this is huge. Those of you who have been in courses with me, you know that this is huge. You're gonna have email access to me, back and forth, homework. And I really do critique your homework. You're gonna send me your report. I'm gonna tear it up, I'm gonna send it back, and I'm gonna say, that's a problem, that's a problem, that's a problem. This is really good. And we're gonna fix it so that it's actually going to work. Getting me with my skill and, and the years I have doing this to read your thing is, it should be should add a couple of, at least one zero to what this whole course would cost. Um, the end of the course, you'll not only know my complete system, but you will have this complete system for yourself. Totally guaranteed. You buy this and you scratch your head and you say, you know, I really wish I hadn't done that. I mean, you'd be crazy if you did. But, uh, you know, I really wish I hadn't done that or whatever. Before the first, these are live webinars. They will be recorded and put in a members area. But before the first webinar, if you want a uh, refund, cool. Just hit me up. Say, Lee, I decided not to do this. I'm going to go, uh, you know, hike the Appalachian Trail. That's totally cool. You know, that's fine with me. Just hit me up, give you all your money back. Now, after the webinar starts, because it's live, I think you can tell how much value I give on a webinar, right? Those of you who don't know me. Uh, no refunds for obvious reasons, because I'm sitting here doing it live, right? Here's what you do next. This thing. I'm charging you $47 for this. That's utterly ridiculous. $47, three webinars, August the 5th 
which is a Wednesday, and then the following Wednesday and the following Wednesday, all of the webinars are going to have even more value than this one did. And I think we could all agree that this one knocked it out of the park. I have put in a link into the chat. You need to go there. This is only available at this price for a few days. I'm going to keep it available. What are we, Wednesday? I hadn't put a counter on this thing either. I was going to do that when uh, on this page. I was going to do that when I put the replay up. So let's say through Sunday. Wednesday through Sunday, you can get this for 47 bucks. Greg says, wow, what a deal. Guys, I'm walking the talk here. This is me paying it forward, right? I think I'm walking the talk. Jeff, this is similar in format to the other webinar courses I offered last year, but it is completely new content because as I just described during the webinar, I'm using what I learned while I was sick and, and which resulted in me just coming up with an incredibly, incredibly cool prospecting system. Um, that's what I'm teaching you. And not just, te not just teaching you, because teaching is like I tell you and then you walk off and you don't have anything. That's what you and I are gonna develop for your business together during this. Okay, so that's obviously different, but it's the same format. Now, real quick, are there any upsells? There's one upsell, Jeff reminded me of it. Um, last year I did several, a few, three or four, something like that. Mark says he's gonna be getting this tomorrow. Thank you, buddy. I'm gonna really look forward to working with you. I did a few last year, I did, uh, I've forgotten how many it was. How many was it? I guess I could count, couldn't I? One, two, three, four. I did four webinar coaching things like this. And so what I'm doing here on this page, this is the one upsell page. You don't have to get this. This is not one of those bait and switch things. I don't do that. You do not have to get this. But if you're new to me or back when I was selling this, you didn't get this. I mean, Jeff apparently did because Jeff just asked me if this is like what was on these replies, right? But if you didn't get the previous stuff, everything I teach is evergreen. It still works. Nothing's changed. Okay. I mean, if you want to know more, when you purchase this front end product, copy and paste local profits, the next page you're going to see is my coaching mega bundle. And that is the replay to all of the webinars that I did last year. And there are four of them. So we have one new client every week. Uh, that one set of replays of one new client every week is worth the combined price of those of both of these and add a zero to it. That that that's I I, I change lives with that. No no joke. Um, Jeff says, "Yep, Jeff bought this uh, five minute sales system, thirty days to freedom, never prospect again. All of this stuff comes out of my own experience. It's how I built my business. It's what I've learned. Clients now. This will just give you more." cool stuff that will massively influence your business. A lot of y'all bought this earlier this year because I offered this as a bundle. But if you didn't, like if you're new to my world and you didn't, you have the opportunity to, to buy it today uh, when, when you buy copying paste local profits. So those are the only two things. There are no other resells, no um, resells, Jesus Christ. No other upsells, no BS, no nothing, okay? That's all there is to this. This is gonna be available for the next four days. Uh, personally, I think it'd be nuts not to get it, <laughs> but you do what you want to. Get this, let's hit the ground running. Carrie, you're hitting the ground running. I just love that. Let's hit the ground running. Let's get you straightened out. And um, yeah, Lena, just answer that uh, support thing and um, uh, we'll, we'll figure it all out for you. But, uh, Let's uh, let's get you straightened out. Let's get you back in business. And uh, yeah, there's money to be made, guys. And as importantly, it's not more important, but as importantly, there are businesses to help and they need your help. Okay, so uh, sounds great. I will look forward to August the 5th.